should visit Ohio to discuss the situation that we're trading around with people there in the federal system. I've spoken with every official in Ohio, Democrat and Republican, on a continuing basis. That was President Biden in March promising to visit East Palestine after the Ohio community was devastated by a toxic train derailment. This week marks four months since the incident and Biden still hasn't gone to the town to support residents who are still suffering from the fallout. East Palestine, Ohio resident and business owner DJ Yokely and East Palestine, Ohio resident Misty Allison. Misty, I'm going to start with you. Uh, tell me what has happened in the last four months with your family. Do you feel safe? Have, have anyone in your family had any symptoms since the incident? Thank you for inviting me this morning and continuing to cover this story. Uh, in the past four months, it's definitely been a whirlwind. The anxiety is still very real. Uh, there are people who are still experiencing symptoms and uh, cleanup is still underway and will be underway for a long time. DJ, the president has not visited yet. I know that for some residents, things have gotten back to normal. For others, not so much as, as Misty said, still some anxiety and concern. Do you feel like the president still should come and check up on what's happened? Or are you like, okay, it's, it's back to normal. We don't need that anymore. So if uh, the leader of the free world feels like he should come to a place that was devastated four months ago and, and be a leader, then I think he should come. But if he doesn't feel that way and, uh, you know, he feels like he can stay in Washington, D.C. Or, or go to, you know, surrounding countries uh, and, and utilize our tax money for them, then maybe that's what he should do. But I would tell you that that would probably be the second trip up this week. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Misty, so again, anybody in your family have symptoms still or anyone you know still still worried in that regard? There's a wide spectrum in regards to health. So there are some people who have never had any symptoms, but then there are still people that are pretty sick. Uh, I've had some symptoms and even more recently, my children have had some symptoms in the past week in regards to my daughter had a rash. Uh, my son and some of his classmates had some terrible nosebleeds last week. They were doing a lot of excavation of that burn pit of the vinyl chloride last week. Now, we don't know for sure if that's correlation or causation, but when uh, there are a lot of children that are having similar symptoms. It does make you really worry. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of the anxiety, DJ, that I would have as a mom. You know, anything that happens, I'm going to wonder in the back of my head, is this from that um, incident, from this, from this derailment, from the chemicals? Uh, is that something that is in the back of your mind as well? Yeah, certainly there's a lot of PTSD when it comes to this. I mean, every every single thing that happens from February 3rd on, you're going to wonder, is this because of the train derailment? Uh, you know, luckily, there's a lot of people here in this community that are mentally tough. There's a lot of people in the surrounding 49 states that have supported us, and we're so grateful. That's the one thing that we want to get out there. The, the water, the donations, the millions of dollars that have funneled into East Palestine to make sure that we get our community back on our feet. I, we can't say enough about that other than thank you. Yeah, that, that gratefulness is, um, is, is wonderful to hear. Uh, Misty, how has this affected your family's business? Uh, thankfully, so I do work from home and my husband does too. Um, he owns his own business. Thankfully, it's an e-commerce business, so it hasn't impacted us directly. However, we did recently buy some office space right before the train derailment happened, and we have not been able to do anything with that building because it is so close to the creek that is contaminated. DJ, what would you what would you like for the federal government to do? I mean, I think one of the concerns that you, residents had was that there wasn't a lot of attention. I mean, really, only only Fox News and a few other outlets were really covering this, and yet, you know, a lot of people felt like it was the demographics of your community, the location of your community, the way a lot of people voted in your community that was showing this disinterest, uh, or that was generating this disinterest from the federal government, and that maybe if the residents were a different uh, demographic, maybe there would be more attention. Is that feeling still there? And what would you want the government to do at this point? Yeah, so at this point, I think everybody's been pointed to and we've been politicized from this, and, and that's okay. And, and, and the, the number one thing for us is to get back on our feet, to get our community not only back to where it was on February 2nd, 
but to be better than ever and, and to make this the greatest American uh, comeback story in history. And I think we're doing that. I think we're well on our way. Do we have a long road ahead? We absolutely do. But, you know, when you look at this, is this Trump's country? Is this DeSantis country? Is this Biden country? This is God's country. And, and we are mm -hmm. America. And I think when the number one storyline should be the way that America has picked itself up by the bootstraps and, and helped East Palestine back on their feet, whether there is an end in sight or not. Yeah, well, the Midwest definitely is God's country. Um, thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate getting that follow-up. It's important that we do follow up and know what's going on, and it's good to hear that the American spirit is alive and well in your beautiful town. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. God bless you. God bless you, too. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.